Coffee and Kush TV, another beautiful weekend, another day. Uh, uh, successfully down, I did want to get into a small conversation before I turned it down about this uh, this stuff I've been researching. You know, it is time consuming, a lot of work put into it. I really ain't got time to play with nobody. I'm on. I'm doing my thing. It's a lot of information. A lot. A lot of people are just playing. A lot of people just talking to talk and I realize that that's why people would say why are you going so hard though I'm going hard because I'd not let nobody hold me back you understand what I'm saying distractions here distractions there and I'm just walking a fine line a lot of these distractions just are tugs at Kev stay right here do this do that do this do that meanwhile I'm like Jeff Jarrett I'm just smooth cruising I'm realizing a lot of people just like to argue little points here and there now to stay in the confusion and won't need to stay with them I'm not because I can't you understand the spirit that's inside of me operates on a whole different frequency than stand put, stagnant, uh, mentally just joking around, laughing and shit. Like a lot of this shit, like I told y'all, a nigga really been chilling because I've been on the run for so long. That's all a that nigga know how to do is sit back, relax, and I don't even know how to be free. Press what? So... This whole experience for myself has just been a crazy experience. The Mark, uh, Margaret Sanger, American Red Cross, the creator, the ex, uh, extermination, all of these things going on. And I'm just sitting up here trying to figure out why and, and what what is all this about. And now we know when you're dealing with the trust and who ended up with sovereignty and the rights of those who were displaced and enslaved and it's all making sense with the french these little indian stories the world fairs my man compton cuz hit me with something and now that i know she's connected with the red cross for real, for real, it's time to start looking at her family, her little sisters, what, these little clinics that they had going on this whole time. And I, and I found we we, you know, all it all you need to do is focus. I had a caller say, all we really got to do is just focus with Kev and stay on target and stay on task, and you gonna get it. Hit that like button. It it, it it's unraveling itself. There's nothing to be in no conspiracy about. You know what I'm saying? Is is there's no conspiracy. The whole political spectrum, the whole thing is eugenics. So arguing points here and points there, my highs and he he and this one and that one. The truth is, this word of God right here, that 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 uh that 1828 dictionary. This uh, this uh, Aaron's rod, George Gillespie, press one, and I got another one on its way. I got another book on its way, and uh, I think it'll be here like tomorrow or something. Is the Black's Law? I think it's the Black's Law dictionary that I went and picked up. Press one. I was gonna buy some shoes, some Air Maxes, trying to be fresh for the ladies. My democratic tendencies almost kicked in. You know how us California boys do. We get some Air Maxes and a white tee with some 501s and a fresh hat or something. You feel me? Yeah, but not this time. You ain't finna get me. Those lose value after two days of wear. Trust me, especially if you fat and your shit lean to the side. You know you ain't getting too many uses out them three hundred dollar shoes. But guess how many times I can read this Black's Law dictionary? My dumb ass gonna open up a Amazon account. I'ma buy all the books, and guess what? What I'ma do? I'ma rent them out too. I'ma rent them out, I'm gonna rent them out for thirty dollars. Press one, the Black's Law dictionary. I got that one. That was like eighty, eighty four dollars. And uh, I'm going to be studying different words and terminology dealing with the thefts and stolen trust. See, we were put into captivity for our disobedience in God. And if you don't know God, I don't even know what's going on. You just don't believe. This ain't for you. 
If, if you don't know why you went to serve other nations and ended up in the furnace, press one for four hundred. <laughs> Let me say, you don't know, then you don't know God. You don't believe in prophecy. You don't believe, and it's okay. It's okay. You, I mean, you. I mean, no, it's not okay. But you, that's on you. You know, it's okay to to go off and think whatever you think, but don't let go of God. Don't let go of the foundation. Go ahead, take your crazy ass out there and see, and put your hand in the electrical socket if you want to. Go ahead. Stick it in there. Just like those parents used to say, go ahead, stick it in there. Pow! Kaplooey. Press one. And that's, I think, what's happened to us. Hit that like button. We should be over 100 likes. I'm going to show y'all something real quick. Somebody sent me this information. Somebody sent me two things like that. Um, and two of my students. I told you I'm stepping my, my shit up on Instagram. This is the only reason why I'm going hard. Y'all can buckle if you want to. You can buckle, jump off the boat, get off the bus, whatever you want to. But individuals are sending me great information on my Instagram. And, you know, shout out to them. Shout out to the people who's in the research team doing what they doing. <laughs> Trying to find this white lady. <laughs> you feel me? So, uh, I found Martha, stupid ass. Press what? I found her. Well, I didn't find her. But somebody found her and said, Kev. Look at this crazy woman. So I wanted to play a video of Martha, of course, and so we can get a feel for how she think of how the American government use Martha, press one, to pass legislation, even all the way up to the Supreme Court where we going, press one. They think I say press one on a national scale. No, that's my YouTube, my press one mugs coming tomorrow. Make sure you cop one. The truth hurt. It sure does. <laughs> Tasha Tosh say the, the shoes just leaning for no reason. The front of them, however the man foot is shaped, it usually fuck up. See, I got a nice foot, nice art. So my air backs and stay content for quite some time. But some of you, I'll be behind you inside them liquor stores, inside the gas station, looking downward. Them Nike Air Max is leaning. I'm leaning. Press one. So let's take a look at this woman. Back in the day, Margaret. And I want to go through a few things. And, oh, as a matter of fact, uh, I did a Wikipedia search on, on Margaret. I did a simple search on Margaret and I went in to see what she what else she was affiliated with and it shocked me. Not too much shocked me. This this shit shocked the shit out of me. She's affiliated. What's her name? She's affiliated with getting things passed here in America anyway. Let me go all the way down real quick. With the birth control movement of the United States. All right. This is social reform. You know, because social, uh, so, y'all socialites and all this stuff. The, uh, the social reform is the birth, the birth control movement in the United States was a social reform campaign beginning in 1914 that aimed to increase the availability of contraceptions in the U.S. through education and legalization. That means through the states and through legislation. Press one, the movement began in 1914 when a group of political radicals in New York led by Emma Goldman, like Goldman and Sachs, Mary Dennett, and Margaret Sanger became concerned about the hardships that childbirth and self-induced abortions might oh my goodness hardship being concerned about the hardships that childbirth and self-induced abortions brought to low-income women that's you black woman since contraception was considered to be obscure at the time um the activists targeted the common stock laws Oh my goodness, you got to do your research on that, which prohibited distribution of any obscene, lewd, or 
the vicious material through the mail, hoping to provoke a favorable legal decision. You, you're, not, you're not allowed to do that. That's propaganda to offset real legal matters dealing with supreme law. Hoping it report. Uh, okay, Sanger deliberately broke the law by distributing the Woman Rebel, a newsletter containing a discussion of contraception in 1916. Sanger opened the first birth control clinic in the United States, but the clinic was immediately shut down by the police, and she was sentenced to 30 days in jail. So that the Woman Rebel. Motherhood in bondage, what every girl should know. Motherhood in bondage. Press one. These are selling pictures, uh, 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 pictures of this woman back in the early stages of trying to get you to, uh, to destroy yourself. You know, if they're trying to get you to destroy yourself, that means you're not destroyed. If they're trying to cause you to have uh, genocide, you wasn't doing it before. You wasn't there. You wasn't in that mentality before. You might have been this or that one, but you wasn't in genocidal mode at that time. This their king. Yes, Jesus is king. This is their king right here. That's for sure. This is Adolf Hitler propaganda right here in America. And it, went, and it made its way all the way up. Senate, Congress, they're all guilty like I've been saying. This is why I'm extremely happy. It's because I called it. I knew that she was connected to the Red Cross. I knew she was connected. I knew the Red Cross was connected to the Nazis. I knew the Red Cross was connected to the French. I knew I, I was trying to figure out how the hell did they kill all these damn people? I'm talking about with the theater of war, 40 million people. How did they get all these people up out of here? And I started to see the Holocaust stuff. It's difficult, but you can explain it. It's difficult. But you can exp uh, National Committee in 1929, she formed the National Committee on Federal Legislation for Birth Control, which was served for the point of her lobbying effort to legalize contraception in, 19, uh, in the United States from 52 to 59. Oh, she served as the International Planned Parenthood Federation. These are all federal legislative uh, lobbying uh, firms bringing money through trafficking. Big bread through uh, the study of, of different scientists going back over across the water. Again, these people are the Red Cross. This is the General Hospital. Let me say that again. This is HRC. You, you know, this is the real deal. That's why she's traveling back and forth with different names. Why? Because they was professionals at name changing. The Red Cross was bringing so many Nazis over here changing their names. It's a shame. All covert and overt operatives. Ain't that something? And uh, federal committees. Federal. Fe fe federal is what I'm saying. That's huge when you uh, when your when your nation's federal government is passing legislative laws of genocide through wordplay against Afro-American. That's huge. That's huge. And that's why I begin frustrated that people ain't paying attention. It's because this is probably this is really big. You know, I'm sitting up here thinking, how the hell am I going to prove that the, this, this damn legislative Congress and Senate are racist from the inception? Nobody will believe me. Well, I got some white men. Press one. I got some white men who go, who, who, who this is Martha right here. We're going to play this in a minute. This is called, uh, uh, 
uh, Dangerous Idea, A History of Eugenics in America. Press one. And it's going to show you, because uh, it's going to talk about a few things we already discussed earlier. But uh, how this sister right here, uh, I didn't know sterilization mean ripped all of their organs out that is reproductive. I, I thought that was a shot. No, they was ripping the reproductive out of these people in the 70s, in the 60s, in the 50s, in the 40s. I didn't know. I didn't know it was that bad. I'm tripping. I thought they were just, oh, yeah, sterilized next. Oh, nah. Mm-mm. Press one. See, this is why God want me mad. He's, he want everybody out my way. Press one. That's why. He want me upset. That's why I'm tripping. Because he want me upset. And if you're not equally upset, then you're not really mad. That's all. You playing. I'm not playing. That's the thing about I'm waking up mad tomorrow. I'm going to be mad tomorrow. Press, I already know it. I know I'm going to breathe. I'm going to smoke this little weed today. I'm going to smoke me some papaya packs tonight. Press button. Smoke me some papaya packs <laughs> tonight. And, uh, if all no, and really and really try to remain calm, but this should get you mad. It's natural for you to be upset. Yeah, bro, it's way too much shit to type, my bro. Oh yeah, it's big. It's huge. But I want y'all to listen to this. I want y'all to listen to this because uh because it's gonna be important for tomorrow, especially for the people who's watch at the you gonna be watching that video on the trust. Because there's a reason why they needed to do this and replace you with themselves. Because the heirs and its people was no longer here. Let's go. Was farming. We used to go and pick cotton or potatoes or beans or something like that. Instead of us being in school, sometimes we had to be in the field. They're your slaves. How was that work? It was pro. They, they tried to work. The only jobs it was down there in the Carolinas, the South, all that. Cotton picking jobs. I remember, um, you know, my hair was unkempt. You know, I used to wear the same thing over and over and over to school at least three times a week. You know, I was really an unkempt little girl. Listen. Like many people growing up in North Carolina in the 50s and 60s, Elaine Riddick Jesse never had the real opportunity she'd been guaranteed as an American citizen. Her fate was bound up with a state built on a system of segregation and Jim Crow laws. The windfall community suffered in extreme poverty. Elaine watched her parents' marriage fall apart, eventually leading social workers to send her to live with her grandmother. Then, Elaine's life... Social workers sent her and what's her name? To live with who? Grandma. Even Malcolm X said that. Remember, he said we was parceled out. We was shipped out. But what does parcel mean? Mail. Like Tupac said, they using my mail. They building jails for a nigga. Father, I'm feeling tired. You know, I think using your mail and your parcel, that's like your so that's like your your land. They using your your postal. Like how Nip say we judge a nigga by their address and they zip code and shit like this. It kept us wandering, moving about. Took another tragic turn. So they can use I was your mail to your property. I was molested when I was 13 years old. Yes, it is. And the guy that raped me told me if I told anybody that he was going to kill me. You know. This is the epiphany of the system everybody used today in the world press one this is the this is her and um so i had to keep it to myself eventually the social worker noticed that elaine was pregnant assumed that she was promiscuous and recommended that elaine be examined by the state eugenics board the eugenics board was a board of five men that said promiscuous around the table and of course they were white men too 
they sat around a table and they just marked the paper. Anybody that the, that the social worker would deem feeble-minded or slow or... Feeble-minded, slow, ignorant, retarded, bungalow 54. Press one. See? Got you. I got you. I told you. I deem you unfit to think. So where do you go? You gonna get sterilized in the Holocaust. Press one. I created Bungalow 54. You can go to the asylum and to the Holocaust if you want to. Press one, but it's, I didn't know that's Bungalow. <laughs> but it seemed I kinda add up, you feel me? Crazy. Having a problem, this social worker will come in and say, I want this person sterilized. See? Now, I know you're not retarded, but you going to the bungalows and you welcome back at any time. You can go from troll to smart at any time. There ain't no coming back from them. Ain't no coming back. They stamped it and that was that. Look, it's all The board was presented with an evaluation from the social worker who insisted poor that there was no hope pattern. for Elaine, Get that she got along poorly with other children and that an IQ others. test That's showed that she was feeble-minded. No one asked me, what's wrong? Can I help you? Are you hungry? Are you cold? You know, maybe I'm sick. No one took the time to find out what was the problem. Elaine discovered the board had completely ignored another evaluation they received by a psychologist who said her chief problem was her environment. She was doing above average work in school and any difficulty she had getting along with others was likely due to the fact that she was always being bullied by other students and was generally hungry. The board favored the social worker's recommendation. I had my son and I woke up in bandages, not knowing what it was for. They went inside of me and sterilized me without my knowledge because I was black, poor, and my mother was in a prison. My dad was running around. He was an alcoholic. My mother was an alcoholic. So they automatically assumed that I was going to become an alcoholic. And then... Minority Report. They was doing this before the 94 crime bill. They just was putting it in legal le legislation and explaining it for another 10 years, ratifying their own uh, white supremacist amendments. Press one. See? They ratifying white supremacy. I told you they won the war. I told you. The com I told you the Nazi Confederates won the war and the daughters of the Federation, uh, Margaret... And all of these other women went on to teach your kids how to sexually reproduce nothing and have death wounds and teach your kids they from Africa. They did this to you. Facts. Without even my son as a baby, automatically assuming that he was the third generation and that he was going to be an alcoholic also. Facts. What they wanted to do was nip it in the bud right then. Stop this family tree. They want to cut the tree down. See? They want to cut down the tree. You see? Wasn't we talking about cutting down trees? Your family tree is very important. Your family tree is like, oh, avatar tree. You go all the way to heaven. Huge. Your family tree is big. Press one. But they cut it down. It's important that you learn this. It's important. And I want to know who in the world give these people the right to go and do these sort of things to another human being. Legislation. Washington. Washington. You heard me. Washington. You know, even in Germany, you didn't have the, Hitler didn't have the right to do this. We are the ones that educated Hitler on this stuff here. 
How? Told you. Pay attention. We the ones that taught him. How that happen? Queen. Queen. They is the Hitler. You feel me? They ain't teach Hitler nothing. Hitler is Hitler. Sterilization. interest in eugenics certainly comes in part that's from the eugenics. experience of that's not eugenics taking that stuff and taking the stuff to their face and seeing stuff that's not eugenics mm -mm. eugenics is complete annihilation taking a person measurements of their eyeballs to their what you call it is not eugenics that's make believe Imagine if they was doing stupid checkup. That's dumb. Eugenics is the total annihilation. Genocide. Natural gene selection. Press one. Don't let these people fool you. Listen to this old lady, though. interest in eugenics certainly comes in part from the experience of myself being a refugee from from Hitler shame 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 and being keenly aware of what was done in the name of science and specifically in the name of genetics. Shame, shame, shame. All oh, for science and genetics. But that happened in this country as well, of course, in a certain sense. The Nazis imported it. That ain't what the black lady said. See? That's not what the black lady said. The black lady said, y'all taught the Nazis. But she just said the Nazis imported it. Press what? <laughs> what up, B? She just said <laughs> the Nazis imported it, probably. Could you believe that? You gotta listen to these people. How the Nazis imported when they got it from you? Myself being a refugee from, from Hitler and being keenly aware of what was done in the name of science and specifically in the name of genetics. But that happened in this country as well, of course, in a certain sense. Trade in place it. Now watch this, certain shit. The Nazis imported it from the United States, which had a flourishing eugenics movement. You, wait a minute. What happened to all the blacks in Germany? What happened to all the Negroes in Germany? Damn. At the turn of the 20th century, eugenics was widely accepted in the United States as solid science among the country's top psychologists, scientists, politicians. That's Theodore Roosevelt, this fucker behind me. That's why I don't show him. That's why I don't show him he don't belong up there. Press one. I told you. They go Hitler right there. They go Henry Ford is Rob Child. There you go. Press one. Who the fuck is this asshole? Mr. Jack London. Press one. Alexander Graham Bell. That's, that looked like a Russian communist. That other guy over there pretending to be Roosevelt, probably Hitler. Margaret Sanger looked like a damn man named Bill Gates at the age of 19, but one, I don't know. Politicians and social thinkers. 
During this first Gilded Age, it was the creation of the gene concept itself that ignited what became a powerful eugenics movement. So one reason that the eugenics movement was so influential at the time was because it provided a scientific solution or a supposedly scientific solution to a political problem. Listen to what he's just said. A scientific solution to a political problem. Wow. Well said, my Jewish comrade. The Gilded Age was the first time in American history in which you had people sitting on top of the entire economy. Wait a minute. His name was Wright, like Hitler Wright, the Third Wright. Gilded Age, it was the creation of the gene concept itself that ignited what became a powerful eugenics movement. So now, as you can see, America has so many cathedrals. Look at this. Look, look. One reason that the eugenics movement was so influential at the time was because it provided a scientific solution or a supposedly scientific solution to a political problem. The whole thing, G from the Bay, you heard that? The whole economy, sir. Didn't I tell you they placed themselves on top of you? Told you. The Gilded Age was the first time in American history in which you had people sitting on top of the entire economy. Vast fortunes made on the backs of average people. At the oh, my goodness. Same time, a new wave of immigrants coming in. Told you, did they go right there? I mean, at the same time, a new wave of immigrants coming in. Here we go. Of this country with nothing with and nothing. Our with nothing they coming in all the Amish people coming right here they get Utah you better leave right now they ain't your deeds you coming in right there Amish you're not Israel you're not Jewish you're not English those aren't your names Amish man you're getting off the boat you from Africa some unknown place way over there press button See, I told you, Hunt Todd, verify, press one, that's my, that's my Scottish right brothers there, he can verify, press one, <laughs> two, two, two freedom fighters, press one, verify, press one, and then my Amish brothers there, let's go. Cities became fetid slums in contrast to the extraordinary wealth that the robber barons, as we called them, were enjoying. We were in danger of losing our economy and our democracy. We want to go to school. We need to go. People forget. In 1900, there was no middle class in America. And there was no middle class. It was just what, what y'all think is royalty, regular people, and people here to work. 1900, there was no weekend in America. There's not one single paid holiday. We had this extreme laissez-faire, social Darwinist reality. What fair? You see, he's a foreigner. You see? No, but I don't care about no damn working on weekend or nothing like that. I don't care about that. They go to work when they want to. I'm saying Oh, this is a foreigner selling Nazism. And the vast majority of Americans were fighting to change it. Now one of those people here is his color. Press one. Not not one of them. They got a dark skinned person to tell this story. People took to the streets, held massive general strikes, demanded better living and working conditions, and an end to laissez-faire, unregulated capitalism. 
If that's the explanation, then the true way to fix that is to pay higher wages and to uh, give people a better environment. That white man said, look, if that was the real reason they need to do that, then they need to pay people more and get this economy rolling. But what did they do, sir? And it was clear which explanation would be preferable to the captains of capitalist industry in the early 20th century, and that is the biological explanation. Biological warfare. Press what? The wealthiest families in the country provided millions in research funding to scientists in an attempt to prove that social problems were primarily a result of defective genetics. Told you. That's the Carnegie Institute of Washington. Guilty. Rockefeller Foundation. Guilty. Uh, Harriman, Harriman Foundation, and my favorite cereal, uh, uh, Tony the Tiger, Kellogg Foundation. Uh, most of these foundations taught your kids how to read books with Sesame Street characters as well, so you, you might want to uh, begin the process of uh, same thing about uh, Disney. Go ahead and recall. <laughs> At the prestigious Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in New York, Harry Laughlin, an animal breeder, directed the eugenics record office. An animal breeder, press one, directed the eugenics. Keep that in mind, animal breeding. He claimed they could predict who would inherit good or bad traits by using a mathematical formula from Mendel. Told you. This is the type of shit Kevin Samuels used to tell you that your face is not attracted, ladies. Press one. See, you can mathematically explain why you got to annihilate everybody. Press one. They, they mathematically ain't add up. If you can get somebody to believe they don't mathematically add up, I mean, what's the use if they didn't, if you can call them animals, but talk about alcohol. Animals don't drink alcohol. You, you get what I'm saying? They were also firm believers in Charles Darwin. I told you, so Darwinism, Sodnetter and his friends, they all believe that you came from a monkey. They're trying to prove legally with paperwork how to get this trust up out of you. Uh, uh, well, be the beneficiary of the trust, not be trustee, and hold the trust for you as you assimilate yourself in the federal system. And we'll hold this for you because you feeble-minded, you an alcoholic, you more than likely is gone. And it's all about that minority report, huh? that predetermined idea of how dangerous you about to be. That's why I got to shoot you, because you're dangerous. Man, fear for my life. That's how you get off. Fear for my life. Dangerous. Afro-American. Press button. Science is Disneyland, of course, but look who clearly applied his theory of natural selection to human society. Told you. So he got his whole ideas from dinosaurs eating each other, cold-blooded, reptilian-minded individuals to prove that that's what you is. So the reason why you ever seen a dinosaur in the, in the museum, press one if you ever seen a, a dinosaur. Hey, look, hey, none of that shit real. Hey, check this out, though, player. Ain't hey, none of that shit real. You might well tell the kids they just use that to just prove scientifically what natural selection look, could look like and how that applies to you. First one is not real. You the natural selection. You the one about to get that dinosaur treatment. Big dogs win. First one. Don't give them nothing and let the sharks. You ever heard about the sharks? The bears, the wolves, in cheap clothing, nigga, that's coming, G. That's because you defenseless. You ain't got no defense <laughs> for this time. <laughs> predators, G. Dinosaurs and King Kongs and shit. Eugenicists saw themselves as agents of evolution, Told doing their duty to ensure that the fittest Americans survived. You ever seen the agent talking to Morpheus? He said, we killed your place. A million times, seven times, we about to destroy Zion again, Morphia. That's them. That's that complex of Darwinism. That's the architect. Press one. That's the architect, Darwin, right there on the Matrix. We did this a million times, scientific equation. Press one, I told you. The only one 
in the matrix is you. They got you down to a scientific equation. White people ain't no goddamn matrix. They where they want to be. Say it with me, my white friend. They, do, they right where they want to be. You the only one living in a scientific constructed reality. You get it? I told you the Matrix is about a black man waking up. Morph is a black man who wake this dude up. Press what? That's why he he's his name Morpheus is in the dream, the dream state. Catch him in the dream state, but his dream state is reality. Caught him in reality. Press one. Hey, wake up. You feel me? So let's listen. They said, we have to find a way to have people who are more evolved make more babies. We have to find a way to have people who are poor and who have all these diseases and all this bad genetic structure. See, diseases, everything they wrote will be genetically you is bad. Press one. Produce less. Produce less. World fairs. Laughlin organized exhibits in communities across the country to educate the public about eugenics. Families underwent detailed physical and mental examinations as they competed to win the prize for the best heredity. They just put families together. They don't even look like they kids. They just look, they just like put together families. But eugenicists disagreed on what should be done with people they consider Look, fitter, unfit, fit, unfit. Go ahead. Fitter, unfit. Some argued that laissez-faire economic policies might be severe enough to eliminate so-called defectives from the gene pool. See, do we gonna bring economic casualty and calamity on their head? Society should not coddle in any way the poor. Don't help them. Don't help them through charity. Told you. Just like Biden. Don't help them through legislation. You see, if you help them, according to the social Darwinists, you would only enable them to reproduce more of them. Told you. Society would be better off if we instituted survival of the fittest. Uh, we would get stronger just as species become stronger uh, when their weakest members die off and their strongest members live on to reproduce. But it would take decades before this social Darwinian approach would be effective. So, so many eugenicists considered a quicker solution, one that would eventually be used by the Nazis, euthanasia. Press one. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ain't that ain't that Tupac chain? Ain't that ain't that ain't that the euthanasia Tupac chain? You see? You see? Got him. Ain't that the euthanasia? What was Tupac telling you? What was Easy E saying when when a little kid? What what are they saying? What what is Tupac saying with the youth, euthanasia chain with the black man in cage with two angel wings behind him, and he broke it and caged. Press one with the world on his shoulder. Press one, y'all tripping. Some called for outright execution of the unfit. I don't even know why they got this baby up here when they're talking about you. What is euthanasia? Anybody know what euthanasia is? Come on. Anybody? Uh, a painless killing of a patient suffering from incurable and painless disease or it, uh, irreversible coma. 
The practice is illegal in most countries. Mercy killings. Assisted suicides. Press one. Wow. Uh, the meaning of euthanasia is the act of practice of killing or permitting the death of hopeless list of sick or injured, injured individuals. Uh, such as persons are de oh my goodness uh, as a way of mercy so that's why Pac was that's why Pac you can hear him screaming out and begging for mercy uh, that he wasn't going to commit suicide remember all that shit that he used to say but damn that's crazy Amanda that's super deep so when you hear Pac He's speaking from a perspective of an asylum victim, a person, a rebel, a renegade, a rejected, cursed individual pleading for his life. That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. He's pleading for his life because, let me see, he always said, that we was in the case of euthanasia, but that's just, yeah, just a cursed individual. That's crazy. Hopeless. Losing my focus, baby. I'm troublesome. Young, black, and I don't give a fuck. I'm hopeless. Damn. That's crazy, right? That's crazy. As well as lethal neglect of newborns they considered defective. <sighs> Genocide. But in the end, they agreed that euthanasia would be used at too dear a moral price. Sterilization was the favored alternative. Oh, my. Eugenical sterilization. Oh, my goodness, you guys. Biologist Harry Laughlin wrote the model law that North Carolina eventually used to sterilize Elaine Riddick. Oh, my. He called for millions of people he considered defective to be forcibly sterilized. Oh, my goodness. What? as well as relatives who might be carrying supposed recessive genes. Oh, my for goodness, recessive genes. They just went on a killing spree. Oh, my goodness. Inferior traits. Inferior traits. In 1927, the Supreme Court upheld Harry Laughlin's model law. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Insane. And ruled eight to one that the Constitution permitted U.S. citizens to be forcibly sterilized. Oh, my goodness. It didn't start with Roe versus Wade. They've been trying to do this to get you to fight for your own genocide. So they, they bring it up and take it away for you to fight for it. And they'd exterminate your ass. They, that's what uh, Sanger said. She said, we got to let them fight for their own thing. You take it away. What do a person most want? You get take it away. No, you just ain't joy. You can't have this. Put Megan Thee Stallion out there. Watch, watch ourselves quadruple. Plan B Parenthood twerk session. See? Oh my goodness! That's they got you. They got us. Uh, they got us beat. They got us fucked up. G. Mm. Oh, the principle that sustains compulsory vaccination is broad enough to cover cutting the fallopian tube. These are the Nazis right here. Take over white supremacy at its finest. After the fall, ain't nothing better than that. After the fall,
Ain't nothing better than that. We got this right here. Cut the fallopian tube, Supreme Court. We taking this to the Supreme Court. Did Supreme Law or, uh, call for this? The Supreme Law in the Constitution call for the extermination. We only want to get to your right, your vote right now. Excuse me, ladies. Let's not even talk about your right, your body. You're right, it is your body. All right, come here. Let me talk to you real quick, though. Fine. Supreme Law does not permit that. Does the Supreme Court permit this? Did King George permit this? Did corporate George Washington permit this? No. This was against the church. This is against natural law. This right here. So they don't turn this into everything that they wanted. There's so many black women out here that can't have children, got their tubes tied, fallopian tubes, with for the but the promise of what what Kevin Samuels was put in front of you to convict you for. Press one. Oh, I got you. That's why I'm going at you, God. Press one. That's why I'm going. Press one. <laughs> As I'm going at you, seven percenters. Press one. They don't line us up real good and say what. Uh, you you can't get married. You hit the wall. That's right because he speaks for who? Folks like this. You hit the wall. And it ain't nothing left. They there to put you put. Uh, and there's a whole orchestration business practice for me to get paid to keep you your confidence low. If I got up here and told you women that you couldn't find no no man, and told you men that you wasn't good enough for no real queen every day and put y'all down, I will be getting paid quadruples. <laughs> Well, I'll be killing the game. I'll be cut getting calls. Uh, how you doing, boo-boo? Chicken head. Y'all know me. I've been doing that shit two years ago. It's nothing. But but I, I see, like, Tupac, they had turned that into something. They'd give a nigga a million dollars, 500000 fuck it, $100,000. Do that. Do that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not stuck in no character. I like being free. I like being mean, nice, mean, retarded, smart. Silly, smart, press one, retarded, smart, because I'm free. I can do whatever I want to, as long as I'm not hurting you. To keep it real. I'm not lying to you about nothing. I'm chilling. You don't like my personality? Fine. But I'm not restricted. I'm not, uh, I, can, I can talk about rap anytime I want to. Urban conservative, we can get up here and talk about WAC 100 all day. Not all day, but you know what I'm saying. But I, I just find it more useful to talk about uh, these things, the things that really got us in this uh, cursed situation, what makes the black woman's womb, while y'all talking about the black woman is God, where her womb is the uh, 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 honey baked oven. Press one. It's the, it's, the, it's the oven. It's the Holocaust oven. And it's, it's dead. You ain't got no reproductive status. Press one. When you ain't got reproductive status, you fucked up. You curse. You can put makeup on a pig all you want, but you're still a pig and you curse and you bald headed. Press one, you can go get a BBL. I just saw a BBL right now, cursed, getting wheeled off the plane, take her fat ass off the plane, one of her ass busted on the plane, get her off the plane. Press one, see? You can't cover this up. You can't cover yourself up with and try to make your. G code is dead, but it ain't the only one. But it's the Dead Sea giving birth to dead children, pretty much. Congress never passed a federal sterilization law. But it's estimated that by the end of World War II, under state laws, at least 80,000 Americans had been forced to undergo his... Now, they say at least. That means that number can total into the millions. Look after World War II. Look at all the states that passed. Kill a nigga, uh, genocide. The war was fought like this. Civil War, Revolutionary War, all these little racist wars was fought like this. The wars was not fought out there with niggas in lines, 
shooting each other with cannonballs. I'm on fire! Pow! Put one and up. Oh. Well, ain't nobody finna fight like that. Are y'all retarded? They'd rather have your brain caught up in this theater of war of dumb stuff. Made up theatrics that they was pulling off in the World's Fair over the real war on you, the genocide. Each one of these states that passed this legislation had... White men had massacres, had black massacres. Let's just say that. Total annihilation, black massacres. Gatling guns, yes, sir. Total, total uh, uh, annihilation of whole black communities running. They'll pull them gatling guns up with them trains. Catch that shit at noon, high noon, high activity. You ever heard of high noon? Press one. What? What happens at noon? Nigga, that train come, 310 to Yuma, fool. Press one, nigga, doors open. <laughs> Wipe out a whole downtown because the trains all go through the, through the, through the middle. Press one. You got to know that hysterectomies, tubal ligation, vasectomies, and castration. Told you, castration. Vasectomies, and what else? Castration. That was just in the north. We ain't even went to the south yet. The castration. When, you, when do, was they castrating? Press one. They was castrating you uh, uh, in the Jim Crow area when they was hanging you. Press one. See, when they hang you, they, they cut your wee-wee off and castrate you. Press one. And all of them are there. You see? Damn, it, it feel good when you're able to put the truth behind what they're saying. You know what I'm saying? So let's get back to it. Been forced to undergo hysterectomies, tubal ligation, vasectomies, and castration. Concerning prevention of reproduction. But check this out. I don't even know Hitler say no shit like that. Because what did Hitler stop? Who did Hitler stop from reproducing? Press one. Only people who got stopped from reproducing uh, is the African American male. The Hitler, what you mean reproduction? I thought, what you mean? I thought he burned the ball up into the goddamn gas chamber. He don't need no damn eugenics. Lying ass people. Y'all just some damn liars. When you get caught Shame. lying, just have to fuck Shame. up. Shame. Press one. God is coming. Shame. Press one. Shut the fuck up lying all the damn time. If his plan is to burn you up, what the hell is he going to do that for? <laughs> if his whole plan was to put you in a furnace and burn you up, how all of a sudden your ass is getting castrated too? Press one. Because they, the Holocaust is about burning you up. That's what I said, right? They don't even make sense the way they told you history. How he about to do all this and he burning you up? Press one. I got a question. Excuse me, little lady. Press button. When did he get around to cash rating and all this other stuff when he burning you up and throwing you on train? He gas you down. I think they took our brothers over there and burned them up. Castrated them, uh, hung them, shot them in the head. Press one. You know how the government did all the World War Two, World War One people. Everybody died at sea. Forty million people died at sea. But that don't make no damn sense. Forty million damn people die at sea. You know how I many forty million people? That's probably how many people at the bottom of the new boat down there at the Vatican under the sea. Press one. How many bones and bodies you think is down there at the damn furnace in the Catholic Church down there in Vatican City? See, when you start talking about this, you putting they sin on the surface. You can't let them get away with it. just walking around and desecrating down there bone in a damn Paris. Where you want to go? I want to go to Paris and go to the catacomb. <laughs> Y'all some deaf cult people. And y'all y'all talk about the Illuminati, Skull and Bones, King Kong, Skull Island. This is Skull Island right here. This is Skull Island right here. Press one. Adolf Hitler was in America. 
period. And he owned dams in America. Talking about exterminating. Were they concentration camps in America? Were they, were, were they German-controlled concentration camps? And were they concentration camps? You damn right they were. Were they, uh, let me ask you this, were they a Red Cross camps? And y'all, nobody. So y'all know there's concentration camps in America at this time, and you know there's Red Cross concentration camps at this time. You just ain't putting nothing together yet. You, I, what is it? What is it? What is it that make you think there's a difference between a concentration camp and a concentration camp? <laughs> and what the fuck do you think a supposed to go in front of that motherfucker? Man? What the fuck is the difference between a concentration camp? First one. Lord have mercy. It don't make no sense. Are, are there trains there? Yes, there are. Is it a train that run across that bitch restaurant? Sure there is. Anybody going to ask, well, what's the Red Cross camp? Oh, yeah, this is the Kreven Christ. Press one. This is the Kreven Christ. What that mean? What's that mean, German man? It, it's the Red Cross The fuck was the Red Cross? But they had a hospital at the press one. They had a hospital at the what the, what the Red Cross? Do? <laughs> <laughs> then when you start asking, you had a Holocaust? Hey, wait, you got a hospital at the at the Holocaust place? Damn. It was only in 1933 after the Nazis took over the German. After the Nazis took over, Germany had any eugenic laws at all. That any that Germany had any eugenic laws at all. That's the well. That's what happened here. This is where eugenics took off. Now it sounds like Germany right here. 1933. That's after we lost everything. That's when y'all stole it with this fucker back here, Will Roosevelt. The first law they passed was for the heredity of future generations. Oh. Uh, all the hereditary for future generations. Boy, if this ain't white supremacy, I don't know what it is. And that was their sterilization law. And they modeled it on Laughlin's model law. In fact, they were so grateful to Laughlin for his leadership in this area that they gave him uh, an honorary medical degree from Heidelberg in 1936 for research on purifying the germ plasma of the human population. The German plasma in the human population. Oh my god, I don't even want to know what the fuck that bit. That don't even, that sound like some diabolical. Laughlin was an enthusiastic supporter of the Third Reich. The oh my goodness. And you know he is, look at him. Look at him, he part of him trying to blend in. The eugenical news which Laughlin edited just fawned over Germany and its progressive policies. And in fact, there was a certain envy Germany is getting too far ahead of us in applying the conclusions of science to the structure of society. So what y'all do? So what y'all do? I mean, not you, because you're Jewish. You're a researcher, but what they do? The most significant... Y'all start having competitions or something? The race to the moon type of shit who could sterilize and destroy faster? I don't know similarity was the emphasis on racial purity. Oh my goodness. Strict control of immigration was crucial to eugenic goals. In the 1920s, Congress debated whether to impose racial quotas and hired Harry Laughlin as a special agent to investigate the subject and offer his recommendations. Oh, it's easy. What well, Laughlin finna come back with what is a scientific study on why Negroes need to be sterilized and deemed unfit so we can unfit them. Could you scientifically make this corporate paperwork look scientific so we can steal their shit? Could you make them look unfit? Press one. See, they got your trust. They trying to get a scientific valuation. Them niggas trying to, you know the doctor. Could, <laughs> you ever got a, a doctor's note? Them niggas, hey, could you deem them unfit? And this one, this one, this one, this one. Well, show you right, baby. <laughs> Cuck can do it. Cuck call them unfit. 
not worthy of owning nothing, not capable. Could you scientifically call these these people these names, come up with terms that fit this contract? Because we trust these, man. We trying to eat off these motherfuckers. Press one. You see how they thinking? Okay, that's how the devil, that's how they thinking always, sunshine. You feel me? That's how they think. The devil's always thinking. So we got to wake up knowing what his devices of thinking ability is. If you get this, because you close, you would know what how he thinks. You would know his perspective on how they pass legislation. You'd be able to go from the from 1898 all the way up into 2020. Every five years, you own some other shit. Like, they got us again right here. They got us again right here. You'd be able to see it once you learn the language. Laughlin particularly wanted to shut out Eastern and Southern Europeans. Immigrants were being castigated as low-level people, as the dregs of humanity. Sir, sir, stop. They just got here in Ellis, all of them. He's from over there with Hitler. They just left Hitler. They just left Hitler free. Stop it. Words like this were used in publications as prestigious as the Saturday Evening Post, and the call was very strong politically and economically to restrict immigration. What Harry Laughlin provided was charts of data that he took to the Congressional Committee, purporting to show that people from Italy, from Poland, from the Slavic countries were genetically inferior to the Northern European, to the Nordic, the Aryan, the Anglo-Saxon. They are the biggest pieces of shit liars I ever heard of. Shame. Shame. Did you hear this? Shame. They they made mythical characters out of you, the Northern Anglo-Saxon Brit. You, what the fuck is you talking about? Oh, the Poland, Czechoslovakian, Slavic, Jewish person. I'm not... And then the river, this one, sir, enough of the propaganda. And that this genetic inferiority was going to have a major impact on future generations in the United States. Laughlin presented data from supposedly objective IQ tests that immigrants were forced to take at Ellis Island upon their arrival. Laughlin neglected to mention that many of them were reeling from the crowded two-week journey they just made across the Atlantic. Trips that were often marked by sickness, sleeplessness, and hunger. Sir, they was getting new IDs and new entry into a new country. They were rushing these people in, giving them new, I'd calling them Sarah McDougal, changing their names from this one and that one. Deeming them fit, they was taking names, that's for sure. If they didn't do well on math problems or abstract image or writing tests, immigrants were marked with an X, declared feeble-minded and deported. And they used eugenics arguments that people who were coming in had these bad genes. The Congress passed overwhelming legislation to limit the capacity of these groups to come in. Even when it was clear that Jewish people were being persecuted by the Nazis, they were a central target of the racial quotas and were denied entry into the United States. In some estimates, up to two million Jewish immigrants who died in the Holocaust might have escaped their fate if Congress hadn't passed the racist law. Took your whole struggle. Now tell me something. What the fuck do they country over there got to do with us? What the fuck they got to do with these people? What does that got to do with these people over here? That don't even make sense. What that got to do with Americans? See? How your pity does not... Uh, your sorrow and the sorrow. See, that why I don't feel sorry for nothing. Fuck them. Uh, because they use this uh, to latch on. 
You can't, we, you, we can't take care of them no more. In 1939. We've been taking care of them since they got here with the same story. This is Ellis Island. How are you on Ellis Island talking about Hillary the Jew? Y'all didn't get, Hillary did, the war, never mind. Nearly 1,000 refugees. The time frame didn't even add enough. Refugees escaped and sailed all the way to Cuba, hoping to eventually enter the United States. They were stranded in the waters off Havana as they awaited news of their fate. Families rode out to the ship, hoping to get a glimpse of their loved ones. But the Cuban government turned them away, and the White House was silent refugees were forced to return to Europe as the Nazis expanded their occupation. The same year, a bill was introduced that would have allowed 20,000 children, most of them Jewish, to... Now, how did it go from eugenics in America to caring for Jews and other people all the way? How did this go from black pain to Jewish Holocaust? How how did how did how did that even get blended in into legislation when they all the way over there come to the United States? Foster families were ready to take them in. Boom! Look, what? Refugee kids in Congress, blacks. You see? They didn't try to get in the dough. They don't let the GDs in the dough. And other members of an anti-Semitic coalition lobbied against relaxing the racial quotas for any reason. The bill was defeated, leaving the children no escape from the hands of the Nazis. The widespread rejection of Jewish refugee I mean, racial quotas you right here. foster families were ready to take them in. I mean, if you're the Jew, if you're the Jew, then in paperwork, you're going to look like this. But Laughlin and other members of an anti-Semitic coalition lobbied against relaxing the racial quotas for any reason. Then the, then the undesirable the bill was defeated, leaving the children no escape from the hands of the Nazis. The widespread rejection of Jewish refugees convinced the Nazis that other nations shared their views of Jewish racial inferiority. Oh, these pictures are artwork. This is all illustration. Since being Jewish was considered to be an inherited thing, you couldn't convert away from it. The only thing to do to rid the body politic of that burden was kill people. And that makes that worst crime of history. Wait a Since being Jewish was considered to be an inherited thing. You couldn't convert away from it. The only thing to do to rid the body politic of that burden was kill people. And Got him. That's it right there. This is the, st they took your Holocaust story. They took it. So you would never know. They took it. Oh, God is good to me. He, they took it. They took the whole story, G. They took it, G. They took the kingdom. They took the story, the inheritance. They took the benefit. They made themselves a stateholder, a beneficiary, and made you them black. Press one. Trying to get in the dough that God himself. They said it's wild. Listen to him. The only thing to do racial quotas for any reason. Like I said, if you listen to him. The bill was defeated, leaving the children no escape from the hands of the Nazis. The widespread rejection of Jewish refugees convinced the Nazis that other nations shared their views of Jewish racial inferiority. Since being Jewish was considered to be an inherited thing, you couldn't convert away from it. The only thing to do to rid the body politic of that burden was kill people. And that makes that worst crime of history a piece of bad science. A piece of bad science? What? The Holocaust? 
What? The Holocaust? When Hitler was elected in 1933 in a free election, one of his slogans was, all politics is applied biology. And that's the red light that one has to see on the road and not go down that road. I mean, that's America's. That was America's policy at the time. Two is one plus, damn. Ever. Look at this. of sitting idly by and watching my husband's dream turn into a nightmare. And so the forces appear to be joined, the poor people declaring that they have declared war on the administration's efforts to cut off the war on poverty. Despite the controversy, the administration was able to move many war on poverty programs out of the Office of Economic Opportunity to other agencies and cut funding by more than 50 percent. However, Nixon did expand federal support for a war on poverty program he felt very strongly about, birth control. They got rid of all the private doctors, they got rid of all everything, stopped funding, stopped giving licenses, stopped everything, and gave it straight to Planned Parenthood. Press one. For the poor. The people in what we call our class control their populations. The people who don't control their families are the people that shouldn't have kids. This is all racism. This is all uh, genocide. This is all oh, Nazism being disguised as, oh, I mean, we got a lifetime of work. Facts. As part of its birth control effort, the administration quietly distributed a memo to federal clinics across the country, informing them that for the first time, war on poverty funds could be used to cover the costs of sterilizations. Oh my goodness, they got a war on drugs so the police can bother me. Press, they got a war on poverty. Press one so they can surgically sterilize our, our, our beautiful women. Press one and rip and cut around their wounds and begin the process of gaining full control over them by way of birth records and certificates and all this other shit. It was a program that became abused because the people at the top who were distributing the money never bothered to issue the rules and regulations that would have made sure that adult women and men who were interested in family planning and interested in contraception could get what they wanted. And instead, it became a program that for many people resulted in forced sterilizations. Joseph Levin filed a lawsuit against the Nixon administration after he discovered that two young girls, Minnie Ralph, age 14, and Mary Alice Ralph, age 12, were sterilized at a clinic in Montgomery, Alabama. At no time prior to the surgery did any physician discuss with the girls or their parents the nature or consequences of the surgery to which Minnie and Mary Alice were about to be subjected. The girls were The girl's mother was given a consent form by the doctor. He knew she couldn't read, and clinic workers pressured Minnie to sign a consent form, falsely stating she was 21. Dr. Warren oh, Hearn, goodness. working at the War on Poverty, develops these guidelines. And these guidelines say that no one can be sterilized without informed consent and there can be no coercion. So these guidelines actually would have prevented the sterilization of the Ralph sisters. Uh, but his guidelines were never delivered to the clinics. They were being held up at the White House. 
So I got a call from Dr. Cooper telling me that I must refrain from any contact with the White House or OMB. Uh, and I said I was just trying to do my job and find out the, where the guidelines were. And my attempts Robert to find out Kennedy. about them were met with hostility, harassment, attempts at intimidation, and pointed invitations to resign. On Finally, he realized they weren't going to distribute them, and so he quit. Wow. Wow. So these guidelines were never distributed to clinics. Even the 200 copies that Dr. Hearn had himself were taken out of his office and put in a safe place. And in the following investigation about what happened to these guidelines, the White House responds to the questions by saying, it suited our purposes. It suited our purposes yes. to suppress these guidelines. That's right. You we can't because it's, it's genocide. Press one, and they've been hiding genocide in Planned Parenthood at the General Hospital, the Red Cross, Seeger, and all this other stuff for a very long time. That I'm really upset. I'm, I spent the last, I'm like, I've been studying. And like, damn. The more I find out about her and the Red Cross and these sterilizations, the more it's like, oh, this is bigger than Roe versus Wade. These are just arguments to get you to fight harder for your genocide. You know, they want you to, so it's, so the blood ain't on their hands, so they think. You know, they won't legalize, they won't make it illegal if you, if you fight for it. There were as many as 500 of these clinics functioning throughout the United States. Unknown caller. And it was sort of up to the nurses and the doctors as to who got what. And they made their judgment. Coffee and Kush TV, Kev Rowe, Urban Conservative at Night. You on the air. What up? Hey, what's going on, Professor? It's Coop from Chicago. What up, man? I've just been, you know, tuning in here. Uh, they've been at this from jump. They've been at this from jump, from from what I'm watching, and they've been covering up a lot of uh, medical legislation, a lot of things that have been under the guise of studying new diseases and things like that. It's all been a uh, genocidal effort, studying. You there? Yeah, I'm still here. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. You saying... Uh, from the inception, there's a lot of argument right now of, of America... This nation incorporated Washington D.C. to spring all this takeover shit. Have it been genocidal and racist since the inception? Go ahead. Since the inception, one hundred percent. And this is before Ellis Island. This is before that. And I'm talking about like um, things like the Tuskegee experiment, uh, sickle cell anemia, all all these birth defects, like problems that uh, black people have had for generations. Yeah. This is all stems from this. So you think we've gotten accustomed to these people just injecting us and getting us absolutely and them vaccines and making us, but it's really probably just death camps and sterilization situations. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, because I wanted. I was think, also thinking that I wanted to add uh, a lot of the diseases that were going around at this time when I was in the military. You gotta get you gotta get vaccinated. There's no option when you're going somewhere else. If there's malaria in that country, you get a malaria vaccination. If it's smallpox in that country, you get a smallpox vaccination. If it's both, you get in both. So when they was putting our brothers on them ships and sending them over there to France and wherever else, whatever was going on at the time, be it like the bubonic plague, uh, typhus, yellow fever, all of them soldiers had to get vaccinated. Okay. I don't think they vaccinated them. They were poisoned. And a lot of those, all them dudes remain sick. You think they just remain sick after that, huh? Yup, came back with cancers, um, bone diseases, things that they wouldn't have long lifetimes with. So they come back, they dead within two years. Somebody else come get their name. Straight out the military, blacks. Yep, that's all I wanted to add, man. I'm just, I'm still here listening, Thank tuned you, in. I, I respect you. Thank yep. you, my man about who was worthy and who wasn't. Who's worthy and who ain't. We, look, it is a sterilization of mother violates UN, United Nations Charter. See, that's a whole charter. Um, Article 25, Section 1 and 2. See, back then, 
people really knew their rights. They didn't just have Black Lives Matter and White Lives Matter and Blue Lives Matter and signed up here and this one and that one. No, no, no. They really had things. Black and white people knew what they were fighting for as women, what they were against. Feminist groups of today are hijacked these women's group who knew what they was fighting for. Press one. They turned this into... No, hey, we do what we want to do. Kill us. Oh, my body. We've been doing this since the 19. We give honors to them who did this before. Stupid. Press one. Back then, they was fighting. Never mind. We are suing HEW for non-enforcement, non-monitoring of the uh, sterilization regulations. We are also seeking consent forms in Spanish and adding... I'm talking about the deprivation and the genocide of American Indian people. I'm talking about our women. 42% who were sterilized from 1971 to 1975. And 1971 and 1975. Look how mad he is. You gonna sit and, and I got a big man. 60 million. He said, he said 100,000. I said 60 million. Look how mad he is. Look how mad I am. Look how mad you is. Press one, ladies. I'm mad every day. This man mad at, at his one of them, two of them. 60 million, I said. You see, I realize you, you can't do nothing unless you get mad. 60 million. This man mad at 100,000. 45% of them was his people. Press one. How dare you? We finna sue the shit out of you, but you let 60 million of yours go. There's no complaint. There's just more. Give us more death. More. We want it. We want more. Give us us. Press one. You went straight to the Holocaust, straight to the hellfire. Press one. You ain't nothing to say. This man, you killed a few of his people. He already turned red. Press one. Not a whimper from this, of, of indignation from this country. The U.S. District Court judge who resided over the Ralph case found that during the Nixon administration, nearly 400,000 poor people were sterilized without being fully informed. There was evidence, the judge said, that an indefinite number had been coerced into operations under the threat of losing federal assistance. Many others were sterilized without their knowledge. It almost sounded as if we were talking about some Nazi era. And it really was a practice of eugenics because these clinics didn't see anything wrong with controlling the birth rate of people who they viewed as a burden on society. Uh, excuse me, y'all. This dude sat up here and said the birthright. Did you hear him? He said the birthright. Wait, let's listen to him again. Let's listen to him. I, I apologize. Let's listen to him. Watch this. Judge who resided over the Ralph case found that during the Nixon administration, nearly 400,000 poor people were sterilized without being fully informed. Listen to this. There was evidence, the judge said, that an indefinite number had been coerced into operations under the threat of losing federal assistance. Many others were sterilized without their knowledge. It almost sounded as if we were talking about some Nazi era plan. 
it really was a practice of eugenics because these clinics didn't see anything wrong with controlling the birth rate of people who they viewed as a burden on society. How are you going to choose how the people with birthright is going to be the burden on society when now you have birthright? You get me? See, the people with birthright is the burden on society. You get it? It's double speech. The people with birthright are the burden on society. That all people should be created equal. Remember? No, they shouldn't. You shouldn't be. You wasn't created equal. You came over here. You see? No. No, we create equal. We should be level playing field, man. That's messed up, man. We poor. I ain't got nothing to do with it. You see? I ain't got nothing to do What the fuck? So when the role is reversed back into what it is, I don't want to see people like, oh, man, that's messed up. And you know what it is. You know exactly what this is. That simple. The hospital after that three simple. days. The Ralph lawsuit resulted in Judge Gerhard Gazelle requiring the federal government to issue stringent guidelines on sterilization, and that included a ban on the sterilization of any minor, anyone under 18. Who did that? Supreme Court? So what we have here what is a real What about that little girl who's 10 years old who, who crossed eight lines, Joe Biden? I am for the Ralph family. They take this case all the way to federal court in Washington, D.C., and they say, you know what? This happened to our daughters, but we're not going to let it happen to anybody else's daughter ever again. And after this litigation, they win. And this stops the entire second wave of sterilizations in the United States. Okay. Sure. Sure. Wow. Keen to put this together. We, I have written a book on this, Jeffrey, and I did not include the Nixon material. I now, what these do, these guys do, sit here. For food. Now, I want to. I'm, I'm gonna end um, it here. Most morally upright young people and math. But they explain. I'm gonna put it in my Discord. They explain how uniquely eugenics in America is eerily similar to. What they said about Adolf Hitler, you know, and they're sitting there and, and on the panel, I'm saying to myself, but we have the truth. It's one and the same. They just they're so smart. They don't want to connect these names because they would have to admit the Nazis are the Americans are the Nazis. For instance, the Germans are the Americans, are the German, is the Russian. You got it? The Russian to the German is to the American, is to the Russian, the Trinity. You got me? The Russian, the German, and this one are all white people right here in America. All of them. Now, when they go home, they fight. Ukraine versus Russia. In America, they friend. You get me? Long as humanitarian aid need somebody need assistance somewhere in Ukraine, we can put this ambulance with the Red Cross up in there. We can we can start the evacuation and money to flow of new people coming to America. Same thing they did over there. Those are the same exact people. Nazis. Okay? Them Ukrainians, those are Nazis with snow jackets on when they go up to the snow mountains in America. I don't like, I don't trust none of them. If they put a goddamn Russian little signal out there, only German shepherds can hear. Because one, I think they'll be out there walking up the street like Nazis and Russians and Germans, and all of our white friends except Todd will be with them. Press one, they'll be with them. They'll be right, right there. Where, where we going? Black Lives Matter. Press one. Where we going? But we got to, uh, you know, just for you to see, this is a indefinite war. These people are sick. And and they are since the inception. Okay? It's not, 
oh, America didn't start off like this. Yes, the fuck they did. Yes, the fuck they did. Ever since they took over, this is what they've been on a tyrannical, eugenic, genocidal rampage. And now one black conservative or Democrat or Republican, liberal or conservative, can tell me that both of them ain't equally as guilty as charged. These are crimes against the uh, humanity against the United States Incorporated. Because when we get nigga, that's them. This is their game plan right here. Their history is their downfall. Fuck the symbolism. First one, you hear the the, the, the conspiracy theorists? They symbols gonna be their downfall. Nigga, they, they history is gonna be their downfall. Press one, history itself. Just themselves on reading your, biogra your biography by Lawrence later. Your mother, as you say, died prematurely after bearing 11 children. She was born a Catholic, was she not? She was born a Catholic, yes. And your... In Ireland. Your father... In Ireland, yeah. ...was a sort of a village atheist who clashed with church authorities. And because of his atheism, his earnings dwindled under community pressure. You and your brothers and sisters were known as, quote, children of the devil, end quote. Shame. 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 <laughs> Listen, did you hear that? All right, you say no video, cool, but did you hear it though? Did you hear it? He say, "Ma'am, father was a sort of a village atheist who clashed with church authorities, and because of his atheism, his earnings dwindled under community pressure. You and your brothers and sisters were known as quote children of the devil end quote." Could it be then that, in part at least, you were driven emotionally toward the birth control movement because of antagonism toward the church, because that was a way to fight the church? Yeah. No, I don't think I had anything of the kind in mind. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> quote, children of the devil. Oh, not me. Quote. I would never Could it fight be the church. That in part at least, you were driven emotionally toward the birth control movement because of antagonism toward the church, because that was a way to fight the church. No, I don't think I had anything of the kind in mind. I was, uh, I was what I would call a born humanitarian. Lord have mercy. Why when people lie, they ear itch? I don't like to see people suffer. I don't like to see cruelty, even to this day. And in nursing, you see a great deal of cruelty and unnecessary suffering. At that time, there was no opposition as far as the church was concerned, any church. It was mainly the law, mm -hmm. the federal law, and state laws that one had to, uh, to think of. Adhere to. The church was not in my mind at all. Well, in going after your motive, then, and I will press you just a little bit more about that and then get to the specifics of this evening, but in your motive, in the movement, is it possible that the movement itself, the feeling of wanting to do anything that you felt was important, that perhaps that moved you a good deal? Because the fact remains that you led a movement against overwhelming pressures that stemmed back for centuries and in doing so according to your autobiography you even left your first husband and you wrote this to a friend uh -huh. she left her first husband because she probably was trying to rob him press one but if you look up into the left hand corner I just saw this I just saw this right now y'all see this HRC here Harry Ransom Center that looked like Harry, that Hillary Rodham Clinton, press one. But look at that. Maybe Seeger is Clinton's mama, damn. Ransom Center. Stole the Jews. 
ransom stole the Jews ransom <laughs> ransom do look like a ransom to me yeah Hillary said wait a minute he don't stole them niggas over there press one Lord have mercy she do got a big old ear huh where'd she get that big old ear from Man, that can be a whole little project. Oh, my God. You right. Oh, we. That, oh, my goodness. She got that Melanie King going, huh? Press one. Mm-hmm. She got that Melanie King prosthetic look going, huh? Mm-hmm. Looking like a man, huh? Mm-hmm. With them big old eyebrows. I knew it. Mrs. Sanger, you said... Uh-huh. Look at the mask coming off. Oh, my and goodness. And so, according to your autobiography, you even left your first husband. Look. And you wrote this to a friend. Mrs. Sanger, you said... The whole lip about to fall off. Oh my, I can't do that. Uh, what the fuck is this? That better not be fucking Walt Disney. Who the fuck put this fucking prosthetic on this bitch? Press one. Oh, this bitch don't exist. Not like this. Press one. What? Not the like this. Fuck? Y'all going to hell. Y'all going to hell with gasoline draws on. Colombo style. What the fuck? Remember Melanie face kept itching? She kept itching? Sorry, Melanie. Melanie King. Shout out to you. I, You know, you got the whole thing going for yourself. I'm just saying, this can be Hitler, right? <laughs> what the fuck is this, bro? Am I bugging or what? Somebody said that ear, though, Kev. Yeah, you right, bruh. It's unbelievable. Somebody said Mort May mask. Anything that you felt was important, that perhaps that moved you a good deal, because the fact remains that you led a movement against overwhelming pressures that stemmed back for centuries, and in doing so, according to your autobiography, you even left your first husband. And you wrote this to a friend, Mrs. Sanger. You said, where is the man oh my goodness. to give me what the movement gives in joy and interest and freedom? Now, what was this joy, this freedom that you craved? Well, I don't remember that letter, who it was written, but I think that it was not a question of, uh, of marriage at all. There was a, a certain satisfaction in uh, doing something that was going to alleviate the sufferings of women in particular, and I was quite a feminist at the time. Mm -hmm, obviously. And, uh, yes, and uh, uh, I naturally didn't want to see women take all the suffering of childbearing oh and my of pregnancies. Goodness. So it was a pleasure in a sense to think that you were striking uh, at an archaic law which it was, it was put on the statute books by Anthony Comstock some years ago, and uh, no one had stood up against it, no one had, had uh, tried to, uh, uh, to change the laws. And at that time, not even a doctor had a right to use the United States mails and common carriers for books, for learning, for anything that he had to do with this question. It was considered obscene. The whole question was considered obscene. Mrs. Sanger, you have helped to spread the birth control movement not only here in the United States, but in Europe and the Orient as well. Why? Why is birth control of such vital importance internationally? Is it just to save women suffering? Is that the only reason in your mind? Well, 
not entirely. The population question is a great concern today, and the the rate at which uh, the I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, bro. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say, but y'all gotta bear with me, man. This bitch look like Elijah Muhammad to me, but I'm gonna keep looking. But I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep listening to her, but the more I look at her demeanor and shit, I'm, wait a minute, god damn it. This is familiar to me, Miss Wait, at which uh, the oh, births, no, births come in to the. We're saving them now. At one time, when children no died, they didn't have the food. Uh, today, our population all over the world is getting certainly better That'll consideration and better conditions than they had at the time that I was there. I went to every country because I was invited. And uh, I didn't spread, go into the country myself. I was invited to go to Japan I and uh, uh, to please, speak bro. there, to have eight lectures on the question of birth control and peace. Well, do you believe that birth control is essential if we want to keep millions of people across the world from starving? Is that your thesis? Say it again. Do you feel that birth control <laughs> is me. essential That's to wild keep millions to of people you. across the world from starving? Well, I think the birth control, well, if you keep your population uh, more or less static until you pick up your resources, uh, certainly you'll keep yeah, uh, mom, mom, prevent I know their starving. See it. I'm well, what's more important, birth control or picking up the resources? The teeth is picking up. Well, picking up the resources, there's, a, there's just a limit to that, too. No. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Bro, nigga, conspiracy night. Hold up. This shit look... Maybe I'm sleepy. Maybe I've been up too late. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I've been up. You know, I'm, I have been up lately. Uh, yeah, well, I have been up. I've been up lately. I've been up for quite some time. I, I, I just woke up early. I just... Just my cup of coffee. You know. You bet not. Press one? Uh-uh. So much take Japan. And she cannot feed. They've had the best experts come there when MacArthur was there. Mm -hmm. and the best experts say they have 20 million more people and they can feed. Japan. She's got to be fed outside in some, in some way. Mm -hmm. She's got to have that kind of help if she's going to keep them. I don't know, man. But certainly around the world, there is uh, there is potential agricultural land that is not being properly used now. Just this past Land's year, on May 21st, the New York Times summarized an important study of the world's food resources, made by Professor James Bonner of the California Institute of Technology. Professor Bonner says the world is not using one billion acres of potential agricultural land, and he adds that if this land were used, and present agricultural land were improved, the entire world could be fed adequately, yeah, even if the population like increased by one third yeah, I ain't playing. in the next 50 years. I ain't playing, dude. Oh, Mr. Wallace, you hear so many fantastic things of what can happen, what may happen. Uh, this and that, I've heard it for the last 30 years, at any rate, of what could be done, but it's never done. And the thing is, what is it now? What have we got today? A very distinguished woman spoke to me about Arizona. And she said, I wish you wouldn't talk about population. She said, all the population in the United States could be put in one state. And I said, what state? She said, Arizona. I said, did you ever hear of Caliche? She didn't know that I was talking about a delicatessen or, or what. I said, well, Caliche is harder than any rock. And it is about three inches below the ground where it looks beautiful. It looks as if you could have food. It looks as if you could have corn or wheat or cotton. But as a matter of fact, you have to dynamite caliche out of the ground in order to have a little shrub, have you know, a little grass mm -hmm. or a few flowers. So there are many problems that, uh, when it comes to that. And the demographers, I never heard of anyone. So she looks Asi Asiatic with a slight slick above the eye here 
that would agree with that. Oh, if we could have another big. guy in the world. Another third. Another third. Another third. Well, you say that originally the opposition was in all law, and you have to fight against that. Today... The opposition is in all law. A little grass mm -hmm. or a few flowers. So many problems that, uh, when it comes to that. And the demographers, I never heard of anyone that would agree with that, that we could have another guy in the world. Another third. Another third. Another third. Well, you say that originally the opposition was in all law, and you have to fight against that. Today, your opposition stems mainly from where? From what source? Well, I think that the opposition... Uh, is it's mainly it's from like the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church. Of the Church. Well, now hierarchy. Of the hierarchy of the Church. You feel that the, the parishioners themselves, the lay people in the Church, are not against birth control? I feel they come to all of our clinics just the same as their non-Catholics do. Exactly the same. Well, let's look at the official Catholic position, opposition to birth control. I read now from a Church publication called The Question Box. In forbidding birth control, it says the following. It says, the immediate purpose and primary end of marriage is the begetting of children. When the marital relation is so used as to render the fulfillment of its purposes impossible, that is by birth control, it is used unethically and unnaturally. Now, what's wrong with that position? Well, it's very wrong. It's not normal. It's not, uh, it, it has the wrong attitude toward marriage, toward love, toward the relationships between men and women. Well, the natural law, they say, is that first of all, the primary function of sex in marriage is to beget children. Well, Don't, do you disagree with that? I disagree with that 100%. Your feeling is what then? My feeling is that love and the attraction between men and women in many cases, the very finest relationship has nothing to do with bearing a child. It's secondary. Many, many times, and we know that. You see, your birth rate, you talk to people who have very happy marriages and they're not having babies every year. Yes, I think that's a celibate attitude. Surely. A celibate attitude, but you agree that Catholicism, according to the tenets of Catholicism, they rule that birth control violates not only the church's position, it isn't the church's position, but they say that it violates a natural law, as I have just explained. Therefore, birth control is a sin, no matter who practices it. Now, the violation of the natural law, according, you certainly can take no issue with the natural law as the hierarchy of the uh, Catholic Church regards it. Well, I certainly do take issue with it. I think it's untrue, and I think it's unnatural. Well, let me ask you... bears it out that it's an unnatural attitude to take, and how do they know? I mean, after all, they're celibates. They don't know love. They don't know marriage. They know nothing about bringing up children or any of the marriage problems of life. And yet they speak to people as if they were God. Let me ask you this question. Suppose a healthy, a well-to-do couple decide... It just looks like a fucking... I, it look... I'm listening to the voice. I don't even look at people no more. That's how cold this, this, this world is. You can't, For some reason, I'm never to, to have person. children use birth control all their lives. Would you say that your methods are being misused, Mrs. Sanger? Not if they're intelligent people? And they had some reason for thinking of children as a responsibility or the, some disease that they might have that they wouldn't like to pass on to a child. And I think it would be a very uh, unselfish attitude for them to take if there is a disease. No, I say a healthy, well-to-do couple. A couple that just... It looked like she got a whole motherfucking mask on. That's why I said a Melanie King, the whole damn thing. ...doesn't want children, and for that reason, they use birth control all the way. Well, Do you think that that is a, is a misuse of your methods? I don't think it's a misuse. I think if they're intelligent adults, they must know what they want. They must manage their lives themselves. And certainly there's nothing birth control. Then there isn't other things that you might deny yourself. I asked you your motives a little while ago at the it beginning like of the program. Comment. Your motives in working for birth control as hard as you have for as many years as you have. You reject the principle... He said that neck long as hell, huh? That motherfucker stick out like...
Catholic argument against birth control as being totally invalid. What do you think is the reason, the motive of the church in forbidding birth control? You'd have to ask a Catholic that. How you scratch your whole face right here, the whole side move? I couldn't take their motive is. Well, I, you, you couldn't say officially what their motive is, but you certainly must have an opinion about it, Mrs. Sanger. Well, I'm, I, I don't have much to do with, with uh, the hierarchy. Well, and I know that the people that come to our talk. organization and want to have the same Look methods, or whatever it is that one can have, to prevent a pregnancy, that those women will say to us, I have asked their religion very often, and they say, I am a Catholic, I've been raised in the Catholic Church, and this, my church is wrong on this. This is the one thing. I will never be anything else, but my church is wrong on this one thing. And that is said over and over and over again. So what the motive is. That thick line crease, huh? They worried about if she a witch. I'm looking way past some goddamn witch shit. Press one. Way past that. How her nose so perfect, but her face so wrinkly. Well, you won't hazard a guess. I don't care to. Thank you. May I ask you why? Now, I know that in private and uh, in actually in public discussions, I think, prior to this time, uh, you have been willing to state right your understanding of what the motives of the church are, and now you would, uh, you would rather remain... Like Eisenhower, huh? Somebody talk to me, and Eisenhower looked like, whatchamacallit, motherfucking lies <laughs> <laughs> they, they say Eisenhower used to dress up in drag. <laughs> Not like this. Oh, this is a boy. <laughs> God, this Not like this. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I feel like Ice T in that movie. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the fuck it is. Fucking Eisenhower. Let me see. I'm going to fucking pass out. You know. Hold up. It's one of these fools. It's one of y'all assholes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, God forbid. Somebody said that ear big as hell. Let me see. Extended neck. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Not like this. Not like this. Who see Eisenhower? Press one. Who see Eisenhower? Press one. <laughs> if you see... I'm going to put Eisenhower up. I'm going to bring him up on the screen. This is insane. Oh, my goodness. All right, Eisenhower. Press one. If you think it's Eisenhower, let me know. It could be Harry S. Truman. That's cold, baby. We got some other shit. Eisenhower. <laughs> Any one of the, this dude looks so familiar. I'm finna pull it up in quite in a second here. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it. I can't believe this. Okay. Let's bring up Eisenhower real quick. Let's bring up some important features. <laughs> important features of Eisenhower. Oh, Jesus Christ. Let's bring up. All right, let's see some features. All right, what well, you can tell from the eye, the squiggly. Press one, at least we can see the squiggly. Press one. All right, then, let me see. 
Let me see. Who the who is uh? Let me see. Uh, let me see. Is how what them eyes looking like? Press one. Oh my Lord, have mercy. I don't know. Look kind of Asiatic too. I don't know. Let me see. Let me see. I don't know with the squiggly. I don't know. Let's see. Pilot, may I ask you why? Well, simply because I don't think that. That chin, huh? That chin. Somebody did that damn chin. Uh, uh, the church has changed in its attitude. Some of the hierarchy have changed their attitude. You can't say the same thing that you might have said a year ago or two years ago. As to your belief, or as to your opinion. And, and then Have you heard it said that the reason that the church is against birth control is because they want more Catholics? I've read it. Do you believe it? Well, they, they, if you read their papers, where they t uh, point out Boston, that that's what has happened in Boston and Massachusetts. Oh, they have simply my goodness. I've read the Protestants. And the oh, that ear. Boy, that ear. Press one. Well, that ear will give, uh, the, oh, Lord have mercy. They're, they're in Boston, in Massachusetts, they have control. I've read that in their own papers. Of Mass course, the church's answer, the church's answer, and I read now from a pamphlet published by the Redemptist, uh, Redemptorist Fathers in Missouri, says as follows. It says that point of view about wanting more Catholics is nonsense. Quote, the Catholic Church does not command Catholic husbands and wives to have even one child. The church considers it more than normally meritorious for them to have no children if they mutually and perpetually give up the use of the marriage right for the love of God. All right. All I right. don't quote what they, what they do, so they, I think that the question in my mind is that they, they do and uh, order their uh, own people think, to do as they wish. But I object to their uh, they having hide in that big ass cranium forehead with them curls. That's what they said? Same rules for people who are not the same religion. Well, they believe, you see, that it is a natural law, not a Catholic law, but a natural law, and therefore a sin not just for Catholics, but a sin for all peoples. And I think that there are other religious groups that very, very orthodox Jews feel the same way about birth control. Uh, Let's look at another argument against birth control, Mrs. Sanger, published in Red Book magazine in March of 1956. It says birth control is a devastating social force which tends to weaken the moral fiber of the community. Immunity from parenthood encourages oh, promiscuity, nose, huh? particularly when that's unmarried it, persons nigga. can so Ooh, easily avail themselves of the devices. Do you doubt that? I doubt it. You do? Certainly. Then let me read from a news story in the Philadelphia Daily News on June 10th, 1942. The story quotes you as urging the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps to give its members, quote, preventive measures against pregnancy, end oh, quote. And you add, quote, abortion and illegitimacy are bound to result if the government doesn't recognize... Well, Lori, Lori said, no, nah, nigga, that's not Eliza Muhammad fool. That's Dwight D. Eisenhower. She said, don't put that on Eliza Muhammad. You know, you know, Lori, I'm a human database, you know, but just going through the computer. All right, all right, but we see this guy here. Pezzo. Human nature, end quote. In other words, you were not advocating uh, Christian morality, but rather ways for single women to avoid bearing illegitimate children. Where was this taken from? Philadelphia Daily News, June 10, 1942, direct quote from Margaret Sanger. I doubt it. I don't believe I ever made such a remark. Well. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, family. Y'all ready? Let me take this off the screen. Is y'all ready? Y'all going to Oh, my goodness. We busted them. We busted them. I knew when I had that dream of the devil, I said, Lord, why are you? Am I about to fight the devil? No, he ain't, you ain't got no choice. You made it this far. Press one, you ain't got no choice. Make, you, make it look good. Make it look good. <laughs> you going to fight the devil, huh? All right, y'all. Y'all ready? Let's do our facial comparisons real quick 
Let me bring this up. Save this to the computer. Um, ooh -wee. This is going to hurt a little bit. Bring in the picture here. That's the video. Now let's go to the photo. And tell me if this is him. In the same vein, in your autobiography, which you cannot disavow, you wrote the following about sexologist Havelock Ellis. You said he's been able to clarify the question of sex and free it from the smudginess connected with it from the beginning of Christianity. Now, why, what do you mean by the smudginess connected with sex and why do you blame it on Christianity? Well, there's many reasons, of course, to say that we have far records of it from the dawn of Christianity. And I think I was speaking of Hevelic Ellis as having clarified the question of homosexuals, making the thing uh, not exactly a perverted thing, but a thing that a person is born with, different kinds of eyes, different kinds of, of structure, and so forth, that he didn't make all homosexuals uh, perverts. I felt that he helped clarify that to the medical profession and to the scientists of the world as perhaps one of the first ones to, did, to do that. Uh, that's one of the things that I meant in that. Oh, that's, that's him. Mr. Sanger, do you... Uh, do that's why he said not all homosexuals are perverts. Well, because... He, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Damn. This is extraordinary. I disagree that Catholics... Or do, you, do you feel that Catholics should not have a right to have a say when a city administration contemplates spending their tax dollars on birth control or the dissemination of birth control information, something that Catholics believe is sinful. That they have a right to say? What they Do you feel that they don't have a right to have a say when a city administration contemplates spending their dollars, tax dollars, on birth control? For instance, here in New York, Catholics comprise about 45% of our population. They're the largest single group. Well, don't you think they should have the democratic right to lobby against having their money spent, their tax money spent, for something that they consider evil? Well, I suppose they have a right. They certainly do it. But so have the others. They're only 45% of the population. That's, that is not the, the majority. But they have a right to get up and... Certainly. Mm -hmm. I have no objection to their having them say that, but I think we could have the same right. I say we. I mean non-Catholics. Well, of course, this is a little bit at variance with something that you told our reporter earlier this week. You said earlier this week, it's not only wrong, it should be made illegal for any religious group to prohibit dissemination of birth control, even among its own members. In other words, you would like to see the government legislate uh, religious beliefs in a certain sense. Where these strange things come to, uh, that I said them, as what I should like to know when. Well, now, uh, you know that my reporter spent a good deal of time with you. He's... Uh, very accurate young man. Yes. And this is a I. this is a this is a specific quote. Well, I don't think I could said it quite that way. What are your religious beliefs? I just don't believe Mr. Sanger, do you believe in a God in the sense of a divine being who rewards or punishes people after death? Well, I have a different attitude about uh, the divine. I feel that we have divinity within us. And the more we express the good part of our lives, the more the divine within us uh, expresses itself. Uh, I suppose I would call myself an Episcopalian by, uh, by religion. And there's uh, many other, uh, if you've traveled around the world, you get quite a bit of the feeling of uh, all, all religions have uh, so much alike in the divine part of our own being. And I suppose you just couldn't put that in a book or you couldn't put it into a, uh, a phrase or a sentence. Do you believe in sin? When I say believe, I don't mean in believe in committing sin. Do you believe there is such a thing as, a, as sin? I think the greatest sin in the world is bringing children into the world that have...
Shame. 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 Whatever the case is. Shame. But we're all just trying to make sense. Shame. The biggest sin is bringing children in this world. Genocide, nigga. What I tell you, these people are insane. Genocide, family. This is how they're able to get this stuff federally approved through the legislation. They signed it off as president of the United States. Disease from their parents that have no chance in the world to be a human being, practically. Delinquents, prisoners, all sorts of things just mark when they're born. That, to me, is the greatest sin Mark. that people can, can commit. But sin in the ordinary sense that we regard. Do you believe in sin? When I say believe, I don't mean in believe in committing sin. Do you believe there is such a thing as, a, as sin? I think the greatest sin in the world is bringing children into the world that have disease from their parents, that have no chance in the world to be delinquents, prisoners, all sorts of things just mark when they're born. That to me is the greatest sin that people can, can commit. But sin in the ordinary sense that we regard it, do you believe or do you not believe? Well, what? What would they be? Do you believe that infidelity is a sin? Well, look at that neck. I'm not going to specify what I think is sin. I've stated what I think is the worst sin. The yes, sin. but then you asked me to say what, and I... Look at this. And I said what, and I, and, and uh, you refuse to answer me? Uh, yes, I don't know about infidelity. It has so many personalities to it, and what a person's own belief is. You can't... I couldn't generalize um, any of those things as, as to be in sin. Murder is a sin. Well, I naturally think murder is a, is a sin or not. It's a terrible... In just a moment, Mrs. Sanger, I'd like to ask you about another social problem here in the United States, divorce. Nearly 400,000 couples get divorced in this country each year. Do y'all see the whole mask? Social problem here in the United States, divorce. The whole thing. Nearly 400,000 couples get divorced in this country each year. And I'd like... She's fixing it. I'd like to get your views on the cause and possible prevention of this problem. And we'll get Mrs. Sanger's answer to that question in just 60 seconds. One look at this cabin cruiser, and you know it's new each year what and this is hard to do in the short time of course that we have what would you recommend to cut down our divorce rate well as a, a great many of our clinics are including in the work uh, that they do in birth control clinics having marriage counseling so when the woman or the man come and complain of their marriage on the skids, we invite them to come and have special talks with some of our psychiatrists or others who are making a study of that all over the country, where we have about 500 clinics. They almost all include uh, marriage counseling and marriage erection. May I? Oh, my goodness. Do you see the bags under his eyes, y'all? The American government. Do you see this? I don't know how. I don't even know what to say to this. I mean, I mean, I know I, it's true. I know it's true. I know that Mrs. Sanger here is the founder of. But since they do this, I mean, who's to say any of them are who they say they are? I mean, you can look at Eisenhower and tell that this is him. A big peanut head ass.
Okay, this is going... Oh, okay. Something just hit me in my head. So this is how they get down. Okay. Damn, something just hit me in my fucking brain. Woo, something just hit me in my brain. So cold. Uh, didn't presidents wear wigs back in the day? Well, they doing more than wearing wigs. It seems like a makeup, glasses, wigs, whole old lady get downs. Like here, I'm an old lady. Look at me. I'm an old lady. <laughs> what am I thinking? <laughs> Something you would never imagine. Something you... Uh, What am I, something you will never imagine? I just need, I don't need nothing, but just something just hit me. You feel me? Somebody said, I can't unsee it. They're tapping into that divine masculine lead attorney energy. <laughs> Y'all stupid. Oh, my goodness. Well, this seems to be a diversity, Terry. But if they're doing it for this, they got to be doing it for everything, whether good or bad. Just this is what it is. Yeah, Tammy B. Never, Tammy B, Why? Why did you say that? Why the fuck did you say that? Why did you say that, Tammy? May I ask you this? Could it Tammy. be that women in the United States have become too independent, that they followed because the I'm lead of women like that. Margaret Sanger by neglecting family life for a career? Tammy. Let me quote from your biography describing your second marriage to Noah Slee. Quote, in New York, Mrs. Sanger maintained every clause of their compact of independence. They had separate apartments. They telephoned each other for dinner or theater engagements or passed notes back and forth. Definitely. Would you? Definitely, Miss Doubtfire. Definitely. Call this a sound formula for marriage, Mrs. Sanger. Uh, different people, yes. It certainly was for me and for my husband. We had a very happy marriage consulting. He had different friends than I had. And uh, I don't believe in forcing. Uh, after all, we were two adults. And uh, forcing your friends on uh, another person who may have an entirely different outlook. It worked out very well. I know that it did. You have two sons. One final question. You have two sons. Mm -hmm. How many children have they? Would you like to see them? I would indeed. <laughs> That's wrong with <laughs> How many children? That's six in this family? Five boys to a girl in that family. And in the other family? Two girls. Two girls. Mm -hmm. Miss Sanger, I thank you so much for taking time out and coming and talking to us here this evening. And Mr. Wells, I've never smoked, but I'm going to begin to take up smoking and, and use Philip Morris as my, as my the cigarette for me to take. <laughs> well, I thank you very much, Mrs. Sanger. Indeed. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. My brain is running on three different levels right now. One is this old hag, Sanger, and his genocide, me proving the genocide. If this is Sanger, if that's that, press one, if we looking at the same entity, I mean, that'll, that'll go to straight how we got passed in legislation. I'm trying to stay focused because my brain is fucked up, y'all. It's fucked up on so many levels. I'm trying to stay focused, so bear with me. You, Unknown you, caller. I was about to say you would call it in. Please, somebody call it in. Because Tammy fucked my head up, and she back in the background giggling and shit, knowing she fucked my head up. Press what? God bless y'all. Coffee at Kush TV. You on the air? Hey, what's up, Kev? What up, man? I'm, hey, I'm messed up right now. Go ahead. Hey, uh, just a quick point to what you was uh, showing right there. Uh, when you look at like acting and theater deals and stuff, all the actors traditionally were men. 
So any role that was a woman was played by a man. So That's right. That just makes me think of the whole craft of theater, stage, acting, spy well, well, craft. Well, and we all. were talking about the theater of war and looking at mm-hmm. Woodrow Wilson. We were looking at Taft. Roosevelt, true. That looked like you had her on the screen, Woodrow man. Woodrow Wilson. We were looking at all these dudes as far as prosthetics go. And now they gave me another curriculum at the role that I'm going to open up first thing in the morning, of course, is back to the study of cinema and the theater and the theatrics of war. Go ahead. Well, yeah. I mean, I feel like that's why Hitler had that funny mustache. I mean, he ain't never seen nobody else in history. What a funny ass! You better not wear that mustache. That to be the That's Hitler's. <laughs> That's like a prosthetic or something, you know. It's like, it's like you remember those glasses that you put on. It's like a yeah, exactly, it's like, exactly, it's like exactly. A what the fuck? Why does this guy want me to look at his mustache so much? Why is this so catchy? Because it was it was more than a mustache. They wanted you so hooked on a mustache of hate, nigga. Yeah, the mustache was a nose piece or something, but it, it, was it that just because even even in other cultures with like Japanese, like all them geishas and all that stuff, them was men too. So that that, that whole ancient act of theater and stuff, all of those actors was, was men. You know, women was not allowed into that that society. So I was like, yeah, man, that, that, I mean, when, that just hit me when that, uh, what you were talking about, man. I didn't want to call and bring that up. Thank you, champion. Yes, sir. My man, what you think about this video? Eisenhower, Sager, possibility, extermination camps. What the hell does that mean? 424 209 Nine five zero six. Now I was I was just gonna let y'all see the video of her and how she, you know, she looks. And now this don't turn into damn. Who is she? And it's a great possibility. It looked like this, given the same amount of time. Yeah. Given the same amount of time. All their kids adopted are foster watch movie boys in Britain. That may be it. Nikki J. That may be it. A lot of them are actors though. Uh, somebody mentioned Reagan. Who's that? Uh, Dime. Mentioned... Uh, So they so they passing things through 501c3, then passing them through legislation. They're creating them, getting them, getting them done with federal grants and federal boom 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 extermination. That's a that's that's tough, man. That's tough to even think about. Oh my goodness, Coffee and Kush TV, my brain. Is really at work. So I'll see y'all first thing in the morning. Shout out to the uh person who just called in. Hey, shout out to my cash app. Y'all been at uh y'all you feel me? Shout out to y'all. Uh uh Kanisha White. Uh shout out to Amanda Girl. Shout out to you. Thank you for your wisdom. Shout out to Mr. Rodney. Blessings to uh Steve Steven Watson and Kevin Glover. Shout out to y'all. Coffee and Kush TV. I see y'all first thing in the morning. This has gotten a little I didn't want to think about Eisenhower, but it was just something about me watching her or him do that. So we'll talk about it more in the morning, uh, first thing in the morning. And uh, uh, for for Cairo University, right after uh, Coffee and Kush TV in the morning, I'm only going to take an hour. We're going to watch Legacy Abandoned and get back into our studies dealing with these trusts and stuff like that. So I'll see y'all. Uh, and as always, family, I'll holler.